Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting uh, me to come speak to you today. Uh, my name is Ken Lee. I'm with an organization called Inovacorp. We're a provincial crown corporation, and, and we help uh, early stage uh, companies commercialize technologies for the export market. Uh, we do this uh, with an award-winning uh, model that we use. It's called high performance incubation, which incorporates business incubation, mentoring, and uh, venture capital. And we deliver that uh, through, our, through our system and to our clients. Uh, typically, we would uh, touch or help uh, close to 200 uh, entrepreneurs a year. And over the past several years, we have uh, helped those clients uh, raise uh, close to, or just over $100 million in investment capital uh, into, uh, into, their, into their companies. So uh, we're, we're pretty proud of that. Uh, uh, the other things that we, we do, uh, we also run uh, competitions as well. Uh, we have an I3 competition that, uh, that is run province-wide. So I understand some of the, the audience uh, that is watching this today is, is going to be entering some uh, business competitions. Uh, the one that we've run, uh, uh, we have prizes of uh, totaling about uh, $800,000. And that's really kick-started start, a lot of companies have also given them a lot of awareness. So what I'm here to talk to you today is about fundamentals of a great pitch because that's one of the things that we do and uh, a very important component of uh, defining uh, what your business opportunity is to whoever the crowd might be that you want to impress on. Uh, typically, it would be investors. It could also be uh, uh, partners or, uh, or customers. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the pitch, uh, before you even think about getting into pitch, you need to get your head around uh, getting prepared for the pitch. And there's four common things that uh, you need to think about is context, uh, the audience, uh, just being ready for it, and also what's the story and what's the flow. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the pitch, the context. Um, so a lot of times uh, people who do a pitch don't really uh, know what they're looking for. It's a little confusing, it's a little awkward when they get up there, they tell their story, but there's no context around what they're trying to achieve, right? So one thing you need to do is know what you're looking for. Um, pitches come in different sizes for different purposes. It could be you know, getting an introductory meeting on, you know, just getting on someone's radar that uh, maybe somewhere down the road in the future you may be going to them for uh, uh, investment. Uh, but right now you don't need investment, but you really want to get them to know who you are. So that's a, that's a different kind of uh, a pitch that you would be putting together. It could also be you know, for feedback, support, any, anything like that, just getting networking uh, where, where funding is available. You know, being able to pitch would help you uh, be more successful in, in getting funding. Uh, there's also different types of pitches for investment, uh, for debt-oriented investment. It's more of a conservative thing. Uh, you need to know if the investment is, is uh, uh, equity-oriented as well, and that would, uh, that would be a whole different strategy as well. So right up front, you need to know what your context is, and then you need to be ready for your audience, which is the next thing, the next key thing that you need to know uh, when, when you're thinking about putting a pitch together is know who your audience is. So there's many different audiences, of course. There's government, uh, you know, there's economic development people. Um, again, as I said, you know, you might be pitching uh, your first customer who might be a significant referenceable client. Uh, you want that pitch to go along well, that it describes what you're doing, particularly if you're in new, uh, a new technology. Um, you might want to uh, attract partners or even uh, uh, recruit employees into your new startup. Uh, no one wants to go work for uh, a, a company when the owner or the president or members of the senior management team don't know what the company is about and what the opportunities are. Um, again, there's uh, investors, uh, there's industry sectors. Uh, you know, you might want to think about geography focus. So all kinds of different variables. Uh, but the key message is that each audience uh, would expect different things, and they want to see different types of information emphasized. So you need to, to know who your audience is before you go in. Uh, readiness. That seems that sounds like uh, it might be an obvious thing, but uh, a lot of people who uh, get into pitches aren't really ready uh, to to tell the complete story. So you do ha do have to do a whole lot of uh, homework uh, before you go into the pitch, and it's not that you need to deliver everything 
you know, the whole knowledge base, the database that's in your brain about a certain subject thing, but you need to be able to pull that out of the hat uh, at a whim. So you really know, need to know your stuff. Uh, some typical things where you really have to nail down uh, specifically in a very deep and uh, detailed way is your target customer. Who are you selling to or who are you trying to pitch to? Uh, who's, who, who are the customers of the market that you want to sell your things to? The other thing is uh, market metrics. How big is the market? Uh, uh, what's their growth rate? Uh, things like that. You need to uh, have done your homework on that as well. And uh, the business model. So you need to be comfortable about how you're going to um, uh, run your business, uh, what model or what types of strategies you're going to be employing. You need to have that nailed down. It can't be, can't be too hairy-fairy. It can be a little bit hairy-fairy. It all depends on where you're entering uh, inside the spectrum of the, uh, of, of the pitch. So you could be very early stage. You're just selling an idea and a concept. You've got to get people buy in. You don't need to have it fully, uh, fully baked at that point, but you have to show that you ha have some, uh, some intelligence in terms of what's ahead of you. Uh, the other thing that's really important is go to market. So I see a lot of, uh, I see a lot of uh, companies or people that go and pitch and they say, you know, we're going to get into Walmart and, and all that stuff. Well, that's all good, but, you know, you don't really have a strategy in terms of how you're going to market your, your product. So you really need to be able to uh, know uh, definitively how you're going to market your, your things. Um, and ability to execute is the other thing. So at particularly in the early stage, uh, ability to, to execute is going to be very important because there's nothing else, because you're new, there's nothing else to measure you against, right? Other than how comfortable the investor would feel uh, or people judging your opportunity would feel that you're able to pull it off. So very important to, to, uh, to, 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 to know that. Competitive uh, landscape, that's one thing that a lot of people fall down on. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I think it has to be, it has to do with uh, uh, that, uh, with uni unique technologies, it's so unique that no one else actually does it. But there is competition. So you really need to uh, make sure you pull together all the information you can about uh, your, your, com your competition. Or uh, alternatively, the alternative landscape, which, which means uh, uh, other, than, other than someone else competing against you, what are the alternatives out there uh, that is doing the same thing that you're trying to, to do or trying to sell? Uh, so that could be duct tape on a little whirly gig or finger in the air and, you know, testing the direction of the wind. That's all, com that's all competition and you need to just be able to uh, uh, ar articulate what people are doing now to solve different problems that you're going to be uh, selling a solution for. Uh, the other thing, the, uh, the last key thing that you should have before you go into pitch is uh, how you will use the funds. or. Uh, if you're not asking for funds, how you will use uh, uh, different resources that you are asking for. This is specific to uh, investment pitches. Um, so the other thing uh, in order to be ready um, is, uh, is to listen to, to the audience. So there's all, there's in, in a pitch, there's, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, back and forth with questions and answers. Um, it's not a linear thing. When you go in and deliver your pitch, there may be questions, unless there's, a, you know, there's rules that are set beforehand. But typically, when you go in to speak to an investor, uh, there's going to be a, a back and forth. So just be prepared to listen to, uh, to feedback. And objections are not a bad thing. So you want to be able to take that uh, constructively and be balanced in it. You know, not too headstrong in terms of, you know, it's my way or the highway. You just have to be able to listen, listen well and be able to defend uh, what your position is. So the, the last part of uh, preparing for the pitch is storyboarding, uh, the story. So a lot of industries do this, uh, you know, film and, uh, film, film and, and television. Um, uh, you know, if you're doing a play, you want to really get the message across. Uh, advertising, you know, big thing on, uh, this is a big technique in here. Uh, definitely for pitching uh, an opportunity, you need to know how the story is going to flow and what the key parts of it. So if you want to, uh, uh, a few bu bullet points is that uh, uh, you need to be able to define one or three key messages, right? You don't want to boil the ocean. You want to kind of focus on the three things that whoever comes out of your pitch, they're going to have this top of mind. Um, in terms of delivering the pitch and, and telling the story, uh, typically uh, there's one spokesman 
uh, but there are cases where it would make sense for uh, the team to speak if it's highly technical or if it's a classroom setting you know the, the, the professor wants you to you know they want the whole they want the whole team to, to speak then then that's good uh, uh, succinctness so 20 minutes is kind of what you want to focus on uh, to deliver and that can be done within the body of six to eight slides uh, you want to encourage questions and answers and you want to uh, expect uh, some really hard questions as well and uh, the other thing, the last point in, in, uh, in the storyboarding is that opinions form quickly. So as you're, th as you're laying out the story, you want to be very quickly in the first 30 seconds be able to uh, uh, get people's attention and their interest and keep it for the rest of it. So one thing the storyboard is, is to allow you to lay out what your story is. The pitch is not to tell every, f every fine detail about the whole thing. It's an eight to 12 slide deck. Uh, not a 60 deck, not a 60 uh, slide deck, which uh, you would need to tell the whole story. Uh, all, all you really want to do is get in there and, and get them to open the door for you to come back and tell you more of the story. So you want to you want to just tell the story, frame it in a way that uh, leaves them wanting more, just like in show business. It really is a show business kind of thing. 